Hey folks, this is Matt Chat, and this is my plywood canoe building adventure. It was supposed to be a cheap two-week project, but instead it took a couple of months. I ended up building two canoes, built a canoe carrying dolly, a boat rack for my truck, and a hanging system for canoe storage. I made tons of mistakes and probably would have given up if it weren't for the money I had already spent. It became an amazing adventure, all for a canoe I wasn't sure I was going to use. Good morning. Saturday today. Um... Well, uh, we ran out of uh, epoxy the last time. I was able to finish the outside, although I haven't sanded it or anything like that. There are runs on anything, but it is coated and the fiberglass is on. Uh, so to do the inside, I would need to go out and buy some more fiberglass. I was sort of thinking about going up there to get it today, but I figure what's the rush? I have plenty of other work I could do on the canoe uh, in preparation for getting this epoxy. Uh, work that I don't have to spend any money on for right now. Uh, so the first thing I'm thinking I need to do at this point is what they call the center thwart. Uh, there's other names for it depending on its shape, a yoke for example. But a yoke for a canoe is a, a shape that uh, uh, sort of comes like this and has a curve in the center that can fit around your neck and be supported by your shoulders so you can carry the canoe in portage. I will never portage this canoe, uh, so I'm not making a yoke. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to make a thwart, which is slightly different. It starts uh, uh, about to two and uh, three eighths of an inch wide, comes down, and then comes back up in a curve, but not quite as much as the outside. Um, and the purpose of it is to give your hands a place to go and grab the canoe to lift it or move it. Uh, more handily and your hands won't slip along the piece. Um, it's recommended in the, the stuff I've read that you make it out of a hardwood of some sort. Ash uh, was mentioned and I happen to have some ash. So that's what I'm going to use. It's a white wood, white ash is what I have, um, and as such won't clash very much with the color that I've already got on the wood and the 2x4 of spruce that I'm going to use to make the gunnels. So uh, I'm going to start cutting up this ash, I'll go get it and uh, start working on it and that's what I think I'm going to do today. As well, the piece of ash is wide enough that I think that I can rip some small um, three quarter by three quarter uh, pieces that will be fairly strong and I'll be able to use them to fashion some type of a seat at the front and at the back out of these pieces, I think, if I have enough. Anyways, let's, uh, let's start on it and see what we can do. Well, this uh, this canoe piece here really is in the way. That's two or three times I've run into it now. I think it's time to tear it apart and uh, get it out of the way at the very least so that uh, I don't keep uh, banging it into it. It's not going to be used this way, that's for sure. So let's get to this before we get our, uh, our wood, a little side project. back to the job of getting the ash out of the place that the canoe was blocking. Is 
34 and a half. I've got 34 and a half inches. Uh, so I'm going to cut 36 and that should be fine and I'll have a, a, some spare. Now the piece is cut, it's time for some planing. But first, we got some junk to move out of the way. Inevitably, always something in front of the tool that you need to use. So, let's do a little bit of cleanup. Well, it's time to plane. I finally cleaned up the area. Uh, this is the piece here that I'm going to be planing. It's a good one inch thick, more than that even. Um, hard uh, hardwood, uh, white ash. Uh, it's got a bit of a curve to it, so hopefully the plane will take, take care of that and make uh, the edge look quite smooth. Not the edge, but the surface look quite smooth. If you've got a curve on your wood, as you can see from this one here, put that side down first and plane this side. It's the easiest way to get a straight edge because on the other side, the wood wants to do this, it wants to rock. So uh, prevent it from rocking by doing this. And once you've got a flat enough surface on this side, you can do the other side. Um, so first let's uh, adjust it. There's a little control here that tells me if I'm, uh, I don't want to really do it too much at the beginning. All right, here we go. Curiously, this white ash looks and smells like oak. Um, I don't know, the grain looks to me like oak, makes me think of oak. When I planed it, it smelled like oak, it has sort of like an olive smell when you plane oak. Um, anyway, uh, but no matter what, this is what I'm going to use. Now I'm going to cut off a piece, I'm going to cut off a piece that's going to be two and three eighths inches and I'm going to do it from this side of the wood because there's no knots at all on it. So I've got to get a good straight piece. Uh, so that's my next step. Let's do that with the radial arm saw.
I've just finished working on the uh, thwart so <laughs> it ends up actually being smaller on the ends uh, on the little handle areas than the actual piece I had made before however it looks like pine uh, but it's really solid I've tried to bend this in all sorts of ways I absolutely cannot bend it uh, it seems quite stiff so even though it's very small like that, the hardwood is going to make the difference here. It's lightweight enough, uh, and I'm fairly happy with it. I've got the edges rounded and sanded, uh, endless sanding. It took me about two hours um, to get it done. So I'm going to go, uh, now I've got the, the edges to deal with. I've got a, a small angle on them so that they can fit down the sides without uh, being too awkwardly fitting. Today has been a day for cleaning up as well as uh, getting some stuff done. Every area that I've been uh, trying to use has been cluttered with the work of building the canoe. So it's a good thing, I guess, uh, to be cleaning up like this. Uh, the less clutter, the less accidents, and uh, uh, it's a good clean slate to start on to doing the finishing work on the canoe. That's going to be it for this part of my canoe building adventures. I want to thank you for joining in and I want to remind you not to forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, we'll find a lot of progress in the next episode. Uh, see you soon.